Well, it's uh, coming to Easter time, so I'm glad I've got a bishop here with me, Gavin Ashington, who yes. is part of the Anglican Church, but a, but a different part of the Anglican Church to other people with this sort of point of view. And let's, I think we should just deal with that first of all, because you've got contacts here on the Isle of Man with a church that's sort of outside the mainframe. Am I making this yeah, the no, right no, way? That's, that's great. The outside okay. the mainframe is, is quite right. So, um, so the, the church is an organisation, and um, most organisations have a kind of memo of understanding, a constitution, that they have to keep to. Um, the Church of England is, has, is breaking its own constitution, uh, and so some of us say, well, actually, it's no longer, it's no longer Anglicanism. It, it's becoming less and less Christian, even more, more worryingly. So you either stay in and change it um, and say, look, guys, this isn't, this isn't any good. This isn't going to work, and it's not, it's not honest. Or, or else, if that fails and you try it, then you say, well, I'm going to do it properly okay. uh, as, as it should be done. Let's just give a bit of your backstory. I mean, yes. you've got rural connections. That's yes. just, I mean, this is how high you got inside the tent, shall we say. I, I was a chaplain to the Queen for 10 years, yes. That's pretty high. So I, 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 was, I was a member of General Synod, our parliament, for 20 years. Uh, so basically that says my judgment's, my judgment's not bad, I haven't publicly fouled up, and I, w I was reasonably trusted and respected um, up to a point. But things changed. Yes, they, they changed because um, two things really. In our society at the moment, um, well, it, it, it's almost like there are three historical figures fighting it out. There's Jesus, there's Mark, Karl Marx, and there's Mohammed. And, and so these three and their representatives are locked in a struggle for which of them is going to influence and build our society. So for the, in our culture, for the last one and a half thousand years, it's been Jesus. We live in a Judeo-Christian society, and, and our morals, our structure, our glue, our art, uh, and all the things that have gone along with that, including hospitals, education, hospices, um, uh, have been part of Judeo-Christian culture. Now, you don't get them everywhere in the world. They're specific to the idea that humans have a basic dignity because they're loved by God, and by looking after a broken human being, you're doing God a favour. Um, that's not the same uh, either in Islam, uh, nor is it the same uh, in, under communism. And one of the things that's happening in our society is that Christianity, uh, communism, in its new form, which we'll call cultural Marxism, uh, and Islam, have all, in our island, are struggling together. Um, now, the, the difference is that Christianity has been amateur about this. It, it, it's it's um, taken the view that everyone's awfully nice and we can all get along. and. Um, uh, we can just cooperate, go along to get along. But you didn't think that? Well, I happen to know from my history that Marxism doesn't believe that. You just have to look at what happened after the Russian Revolution or look what's happening in China today. Uh, and I also happen to know that Islam doesn't believe that because I taught Islamic studies uh, at postgraduate level. I, I've read the Quran. Um, and if you like, there's a kind of passive Islam and there's active Islam. So passive Islam is lovely. It's very quiet, full of nice people. Uh, who, who are very good neighbours, but active Islam is, is a bit problematic. Wherever active Islam has taken over, it has never, ever let go, apart from Spain, once, where it got driven out. So, um, if the Isla your Islamic neighbours turn from passive to active, then you're in a different ballgame to the one you were. So, our Judeo-Christian tradition is surrounded by some fairly, a fairly serious uh, cultural Marxist attempt to take over our culture, so much so now that I that, that I couldn't get a job as a social worker, as a Christian, or as a teacher, if I expressed my views about the family. I, I'm not employable. And I think within five years, it'll be a criminal offence. Um, for example, at the moment, uh, there's an attempt to define Islamophobia as any linking of Islam with violence historically. But that's just history. History links Islam with violence. But at the moment, there's the all-party committee in the, in, in the House of Commons is about to adopt a definition so that if I say, you know, the thing about Islam is I don't like the way they chop people's hands off, uh, I'll be committing a criminal offence. That's the new definition of Islamophobia. So in order to keep some space for, for the Christian point of view, um, we have to actually make a safe space, to, for, particularly for freedom of speech. Uh, I need freedom of speech because I, I, I need to use I need to speak to find out what's real, because if I, if I say something to you, you can say, actually, Gavin, you're making a mistake, and here's how you're wrong. And I say, well, that's interesting, Paul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, actually, let's, let's add this to it. And then together, using our freedom of speech, we can find a way forward. But if at the moment one of us 
is is under pressure from the law not to say what we think is true, mm -hmm. then we're in we're in a real trouble. And our society is right on the edge of that now. But the tipping point for you was the Quran being read out in a, in a Anglican church, wasn't it? Yeah, and then yeah. You, you, you cathedral. That that was your. I've had enough. I'm out. Well, it, not really. Um, it, it, it's slightly more sophisticated than that. Uh, I'd been. Be because I'd had a friend of mine who was an Islamic academic uh, who worked in one of the interreligious teams I ran at university. and we, you know, I used to put on interfaith conferences till the cows come home for, for a quarter of a century. Uh, it's my area of expertise. Uh, and one day he said to me, you know, Gav, the nice thing about my position is I don't have to, I don't have to try so hard anymore because the United Kingdom is going to be the Islamic Republic by the time my grandchildren grow up. I said, you're kidding. You know, you're just being... But what's this? Mm -hmm. I said, no, seriously, look, look at the statistics. And this was 2002. And the statistics were that in five of the northern cities of, of the UK, the majority of people under, under 16 were Muslim. Mohammed is by far the most popularly chosen uh, name, Christian, I would say Christian name, Islamic name, first yeah. name. Yeah. Um, and he said, it's just demography and democracy. Um, as we grow and become the majority in, our, in, in, in communities and under 16, we're now the majority. So as these people grow up, it works its way through. We will want Sharia law. And if you look at the, 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 the questionnaires and the surveys that are done, the, the greater proportion of Muslims in our country want Sharia law. Are you serious? I'm absolutely serious. Oh my goodness, OK. So you, you're seeing a, a, a real trend here yes. away from Christianity. I would, very much so. But, but not, it, it, I mean, it would upset me if it was away from Christianity because I'm a Christian and I believe it's a good way. Right. What, what, what the trend is in favour of a kind of repressive, repressive, uh, progressive agenda. So these are the things you have to believe about human beings, for example. I mean, the latest thing is um, that, you know, you can be whatever gender you want to be inside your head. Yeah, I want to deal with that in part two. Okay. So, 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 but, but what, and if you don't believe that, you can't work for us or you can't belong to this organisation. Right. It doesn't matter people thinking that. We're all entitled to our views. It's when one dominant group says to another one, if you don't agree with us, you can't belong. So you've got the progressive people saying that, and, you, and the Muslims are about to say that too. But are you saying you're accepting of other people's faith, so you're, you're not course. judging them? But no, no, of course. It sounds like you, know, you can't work with them, so you're getting out, and you're doing your own No, no, there's a distinction between, between people as people and, and uh, ideological systems. So, for example, I've got lots of friends who are communists, and they're communists because they're nice people. They believe in sharing things out fairly. But communism is a very, very dangerous uh, thing. Jordan Peterson, for example, um, who, who taught the kind of psychology that I taught at university, he's a, he's a colleague I'd heard of psychologically. One of the things Jordan Peterson says is the 20th century is a history uh, of the experiment of communism. And it's so dangerous, it, it cost 100 million lives. Why don't our young people know how dangerous communism is? Now, I, mean, I meet a communist, and they say, I'd, I'd like to take away from the rich and give to the poor, and I, I quality. Good on you, mate. That, that's, a, you know, that's great. The problem is when you put it into a political system, it turns murderous. And we know it turns murderous because we have 80 years of the Soviet Union and, and, mm -hmm. and 100 years of China to look at. Right, we're going to have part two, but I want you just before you go to tell us what you're here this weekend, just to promote what you are here to do. So there are a number of us who are, who are Anglicans who think that the Anglican church is sold out. And so we've tried to change it from within and the doors have been closed. And they said, you, you can't change it from within. Uh, uh, so as a chaplain of the Queen, for example, I was told, you can go on being a chaplain of the Queen if you shut up. Mm -hmm. But if you comment on things publicly, you're rocking the boat and, you know, and. And you did, and you did. So, so <laughs> I, I said, so fine, that's great. I, you know, this boat needs rocking. Yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I'll miss the garden parties, I'll miss the scarlet cassock. But mo much more important is, is keeping freedom of speech in society. I think if you ask me what I was most about, mm -hmm. it's the love of Jesus and freedom of speech. Right. And those the, things go together. So, this, now, this, so, this, so we started a new Anglican movement. Yes. And St. Augustine's uh, in Douglas is, is one the of the... breakaway church. It's the breakaway church. And I've come to celebrate Easter and to baptise and confirm people on the greatest festival of the Christian year with my friend Jules, Dr. Jules Gomez. And we'd love people to come and join us and uh, sniff it out. OK. Well, as I said, LGBT is a big hot subject so we're going to do that in a separate part of this interview sure good